Howdy and welcome to my channel. As you probably gathered from the video title, uh, this is a video on my new 3D printer. <laughs> and no, you're not looking at the uh, printer right now. Uh, that is the HP uh, 8640B. It's a signal generator that I showed in my uh, lab tour video. Unfortunately, a few months ago when I was cleaning the front faceplate of the generator, a uh, thread from my cleaning cloth snagged the AM mode switch. Not realizing my strength, I snapped it right off. So I'm kind of zooming in here so I can get a little closer look. It's uh, the slider switch over on the left-hand side uh, below the AM. You can look at the FM and see that the, the off switch is still there. And <laughs> on the AM, there's no switch. But you might be able to make out a, the plastic switch stuck uh, in that uh, groove just behind the faceplate. It's just below the DC pulse. I'm never a big fan of these switches. They just uh, seem too small. I also replaced a crack knob uh, by purchasing one on eBay. And I know I might be able to buy a generator for parts only off of eBay uh, to maybe fix that uh, slide switch. But I was thinking uh, if the plastic slide is just an overlay of the switch, maybe I could 3D print it. And this would probably be a job I might do maybe in a few months since I've got some other projects uh, on the burners right now. And uh, the 3D printing could also be helpful in some of my upcoming projects. So I started uh, looking into uh, getting a printer over the last couple of weeks. And after doing some uh, reading online and viewing some of the uh, video reviews, uh, I settled on a printer in my price range that had the features I was looking for. And I should mention that I'm a complete <laughs> new person in this area, uh, so I have a lot to learn. Uh, but that's, of course, one thing that I really like about this hobby. Here's my new 3D printer. Uh, it's the Lowsbot Mini from uh, Alif Objects Incorporated, and they are out of uh, Loveland, Colorado, uh, USA. Uh, one of the reasons I chose this printer is that the software is free and it's open sourced hardware, therefore kind of for developers or hobbyists like myself. List price is uh, $1,350 uh, US dollars, uh, by or but I ordered it on uh, Black Friday. That's the day after Thanksgiving here in the U.S., and I got it for uh, $12.50 U.S. dollars, along with free shipping. There's some very good uh, YouTube reviews on this printer, and I'll list uh, those in the show notes below. Since I'm truly uh, you know, a novice on 3D printing, uh, you know, experiencing it for the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, this will be a first impression of the printer and not a full review. Uh, I'll list some of the data on the unit, but as you may know, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. Um, here's the top pre-cut foam packing uh, from the box, and I found the uh, printers very well packaged. Um, with the exception of the printer, uh, here's the contents of the box, and you can get a poster showing the names of the major parts and uh, helpful links uh, shown there in the back. Uh, here's a closer look at the box. We get some uh, sample yellow hips uh, filament a yellow octopus uh, that was printed on this 3D printer, uh, some documentation, and a Lowsbot uh, decal over there. And I like uh, tigers uh, better uh, than octopuses, but, you know, whatever. Get uh, five replacement uh, wiper pads for cleaning the print head nozzle, and the cleaning is done before each print. A two millimeter Allen wrench, a bristle brush, a dental pick uh, with protective uh, cover, very sharp point, Tweezers uh, look pretty good. And a part removal knife uh, that you uh, slip under the object uh, to pry it up from the printer's bed. And next to that, we have an AC power cord. Uh, again, a USB uh, cable for tethering the printer uh, to a computer. Uh, there's also uh, no uh, control panel or SD card slot on this printer. There's a quick start guide. Uh, quality looks really good. Uh, they give you step-by-step -step instructions uh, when you first get it for setup. And a USB drive uh, with supported documentation files, including uh, Cura, which is a slicing program uh, that interfaces with the 3D p uh, printer. And then, um, again, just kind of a quick shot there of the uh, reference poster. Uh, here's a look at the 3D printer with all the packing materials removed. And the uh, power is uh, 100 to uh, 240 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz. 
Uh, the maximum head temperature is 300 degrees C and the hexagon it's an all metal print head with a nozzle diameter of 0.5 millimeters. It uses uh, 3 millimeter uh, filaments and uh, for cooling purposes both the head and the object have uh, cooling fans. On this uh, we have heated uh, borosilicate uh, glass bed and the bed surface is covered with a PEI uh, film and uh, the maximum bed temperature is 120 degrees C uh, the top print speed is 275 uh, millimeters per second uh, layer thicknesses are adjustable from 0 0.05 millimeters to 0.5 millimeters and the print area is 120 excuse me 152 millimeters by 152 by 158 millimeters approximately 6 inch uh, cubic volume. And this is a look at the uh, Cura uh, slicing program that takes your model and then converts it into G-code. And because of the high temperature on the uh, print head, um, this particular unit can print all kinds of materials. So you have, for example, ABS, PLA, uh, HIPS, and uh, quite a few others that are listed. It even has some uh, types with a metal, for example, conductivity, more that are more for clear glass. And then uh, this again is uh, taking a look at it, and it is an open sourced uh, printer. And uh, you get a one year um, warranty with uh, tech support. And then I have a, a few shots here of just showing that a lot of this printer is built by uh, other printers. So these have all been 3D printed. So you have a, a Z axis. Um, and there's the print carriage or print head area. And you can see the uh, gears and everything are all been uh, printed by a 3D printer. And we've got some really bright and green colored uh, support structure for the Z axis and the lead screw. And over here we've got the uh, drag train, um, excuse me, <laughs> drag chain uh, for cabling. And here we have a delta power supply uh, rated 150 watts. We've got the fan. And we have a mini a Rambo um, controller board, which is behind all those wires. Notice a, a lot of the ferrite cores there for noise suppression. And the Rambo board also has uh, replaceable fuses, and that can be very handy. And here we're uh, showing uh, the printer uh, cleaning in the head there with that hexagon all-metal head. It does that at the beginning of every uh, print. And the reason you don't hear a sound right there, I had some audio problems, so it's muted, but it will come back in a little bit. Then there are four uh, discs on the corners, and what it does is it slowly lowers down and locates those, uh, performs an electrical contact, and then in software, if the if the uh, bed isn't quite leveled, it will make the compensation. So it's not actually mechanically leveling the bed; it's doing this in software. And there you can see it comes down, and just makes a touch. I just showed three here, so see it's going back. It finds the disc and then slowly lowers down until it makes a connection. And then again, it modifies in the software. And here you get to hear the sound. And we're uh, printing the uh, Rocto Octopus. Uh, Rocktopus. And this is my first print. And did very little. And you know, just some very basic setup. The temperature uh, for the print head, the material I was using, that was about it. I select the model and said print. And again, these have been done a million times on YouTube, so I'm really going to abbreviate it. And there's the completed thing. It took, I remember right, about 45 minutes. And the software reports it very accurately. So I was kind of impressed with that. It was to the second. This is a BeagleBone Black development platform with a 1 gigahertz ARM Cortex processor. And I plan to add this to the printer so a computer doesn't have to be connected to it all the time. It costs around $50 US. Uh, it's also interesting to note that this printer already has mounting holes that exactly match the BeagleBone. This is uh, my second uh, print that I did, and it's a case for the BeagleBone, but I actually plan to design my own. Here's a shot of the case and the BeagleBone black in the approximate location on the printer. Again, by using this hardware, I can connect either wirelessly or by Ethernet to the printer, and for example, load the objects and control the printer from my tablet or a PC anywhere in the house. And this would be accomplished by using a free application called Octoprint. I got these ideas from other YouTubers uh, that are listed in the show notes below. 
So my first impressions of this 3D printer are very positive and I'm happy with my purchase. Uh, on the pro side, I really like the quality of construction, uh, the open source hardware for hobbyists, and the ease of operation. And at least I've only printed two things, but so far the quality print looks pretty good and I wasn't at the highest quality. And on the con side, uh, the price might be a little high, it's a bit noisy, and it has to be tethered uh, to a computer for operation. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And again, thank you for watching.